Arousal leakage or incontinence and climacteria are usually associated with men who've had radical prostatectomy surgeries. And with the removal of the prostate, we actually um, damage the smooth muscle of the bladder sphincter, which used to prevent um, urine flowing through sexual activity. But without that smooth muscle there, unfortunately, we can get this situation where there is urinary leakage at the time of sexual stimulation. Arousal leakage means there's leakage when there's any sort of visual or tactile stimulus that could cause a few drips of urine. Contrast to that is climacteria, which is literally the loss of urine at climax or at orgasm. So they're two quite different things. There are treatments for both. So number one is pelvic floor exercises. We have evidence for that, that we can improve that, particularly we do the fast twitch fiber training. So that's squeeze the front, lift nuts to guts and let go 10 times rapidly, doing that five or six times a day. We also know that it's really helpful to avoid things that might stimulate urine production before any sex activity, things like caffeine and alcohol, to empty the bladder before it, there is any sexual function or activity, and to use a condom if there's a lot of leakage or something called a urostop or um, a cock ring, which can actually help compress the urethra and stop leakage from occurring. So ultimately we know that this is a common thing. In fact, 90, up to 93% of guys will actually develop climacteria or arousal leakage after radical prostatectomy. But that does seem to be tied up with the nerve healing response as well. And that usually after a year, green meat, 5% of guys might be left with this condition. And if they are, and it's persistent and bothers them, we can actually do sling surgery to lift up that area and prevent that leakage, which is a urological corrective surgical operation that takes about one hour to do. And I've had about three or four patients actually have that surgery, even though they were leaking at no other time apart from during sexual activity. So there's lots and lots of options to help. And I do believe we can cure it through that sling surgery if needed. So it sounds like the first step will be making sure those pelvic floor exercises are being done correctly. Um, and I'm right in thinking that if somebody is unsure if they're doing those exercises correctly, that seeing a physiotherapist who has a real-time ultrasound machine could help. So yeah, Victoria, we, we used to do the internal testing. We would sort of actually check the back passage, the, the rectum, to assess male pelvic floor. And for men who have urinary leakage conditions when they're moving around, it's not really the right test to do. So fortunately, with the age of technology, we have these really simple um, real-time ultrasound machines. We place a probe um, on the stomach or between the legs, and we can ask the patient to activate these muscles. And we can more or less coach guys to do the right emphasis, the right technique, right in front of our eyes. My clinic women have just got no idea and they're puffing in there, blowing in there, using their abs. And what I'll do is I'll put the probe on my own stomach and my own abdominal area and I'll show them what to do. And in every case, once I've seen it being done visually, they're able to then take it on mentally, get that visual map and then apply it to their own bodies. And overall, that visual thing seems to work very, very well with guys. So a pelvic health ther therapist should always have a, an ultrasound available in their clinic, yes.